If you remember back to week one of this series, I promised you guys on week four we would do something exciting. So how about you join me in my morning Bible study? Good morning, guys. It's Jeff here from That Bold Life, your weekly encouragement to help you live a bold life for Jesus. Now, for the record, it is 8.18 for me. You can't actually see that, but it is 8.18 in the morning, which is very early for me. Uh, but this is whenever I like to do some of my own Bible study. I'll wake up early before the rest of the house arises, um, and I'll get my Bible, which I'll be reading from the CSB that I was telling you, you guys about that I got to review. Um, I'll be journaling in my notebook that I got from my church, um, and I'll have my phone here to research anything that I need. And of course, coffee. All right, guys, let's get started. Sorry, spilled coffee. Not how I like to start my Bible studies. This is what my typical setup would look like. I'll have my Bible, uh, which one I'm reading from today is going to be the Christian Standard Version, if that is in focus. Um, then I'll be using my notebook, which this is one that our church had given out. Uh, and I always have a pen in there. Personally, I like a fine tip pen. Uh, then I'll have my phone that I can use for reference. Uh, now, I'll, whether I have my phone or not depends on if I'm doing Bible study, Bible reading, or just a devotion. But since this video is about doing a Bible study, I'll have my phone for reference just in case I need it. Now, we're going to be reading in um, 1 Timothy today. Let's read 1 Timothy 1. This is not, I did not pre read this and plan anything out. This is just straight off cuff how I would actually do my normal Bible study. All right. So, 1 Timothy. So it says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope. Now I like that in that first verse. I just, I love that he, Paul's already talking about, in the first verse he says who he is, but more importantly he says who Jesus is to him. So he says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of, our, of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope. And there's actually a reference down here if we wanted to look. I kind of like this. The, the CSB Bible has a lot of different references and footnotes. Um, for the sake of time, I will only read the footnotes. And that is just, it's a reference to another passage. Okay. Uh, verse 2, he says, To Timothy, my true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urge you when I went to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus so that you may instruct certain people not to teach false doctrine or to pay attention to myths and endless genealogies. These promote empty speculations rather than God's plan, which operates by faith. Now the goal of our instruction is love that comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Now I'm going to immediately stop right there for just a moment. I may lay my phone just to hold that down. But that verse kind of spoke to me, and anytime I have a verse speak to me, so I'm gonna pull out my journal for the first time here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. So. And you do this, journaling is kind of your own thing, you can do it however you want, but if you see up here in this corner, I have, uh, I'm not a good artist, but it's supposed to be like volume, cubes, saying is that is message. So I have a, a key here in the front of my book that I kind of mark each page, as you can see. Um, so, as I go through, this is my writing page. I'll put this in the top right corner. I have, uh, if I'm reading a book, this I'll have this little B in a box. If I'm doing a Bible study, which I'm doing right now, I'll have this little bookmark. During a sermon, I'll put that. During a class, I'll put that. And if I get it from a video, I'll put like a little YouTube icon. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and then I have all these other things as I'm writing down notes. I'll put, you know, if it's a question I'm asking myself, it's a ministry idea, it's a God moment, if it's a prayer, a dream, a video idea, or social media, I kind of have all these other little keys that I kind of do as I journal. If you'd like, I, I can do more uh, a more in-depth view of, of how I journal and uh, stuff. If you guys like that, go and hit that thumbs up button and uh, leave me a comment down below saying you want to know more about journaling. So for this one, it's going to be a Bible study. So in my right corner here, I'm going to put a little bookmark. Like I said, I'm not. It just looks like a W. Oh, well. I know what it means. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put the top that I'm reading 1 Timothy 1. Make sure I know that's a one. Okay, increase down my page. So I kind of read that part over again. Now the goal of our instruction is love that comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. So that, that is verse five. So I'm just gonna write down, just so I remember later, 1 Tim. Uh, verse 5. 
And I may actually write that out later and that may be kind of the verse that I, I meditate on and I think about today. Um, because that one really jumps out. Now I'm just gonna set that there for a minute. And I'll leave my phone over here. So coming back to verse five. Now the goal of our instruction is love that comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Some have departed from these and turned aside to fruitless discussion. They want to be teachers of the law, although they don't understand what they are saying or what they are insisting on. But we know that the law is good, provided one uses it legitimately. We know that the law is not meant for righteous person, but for lawless and rebellious, for the ungodly and sinful. So I'm going to reread that because I, I, I realize I skimmed through it and didn't completely understand what it said. So I'm just going to read it one more time. We know that the law is not, so I'm going to emphasize that, is not meant for a righteous person, but for the lawless and rebellious, for the ungodly and sinful, for the unholy and irreverent, for those who kill their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral and homosexuals, for slave traders, liars, perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound teaching that conforms to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God, which was entrusted to me. Okay, so you'll notice that I reread that part. Just as I was reading, I realized I kind of missed a step. I missed a word. I just didn't completely understand what Paul was saying. So I just want to start that verse over and read it over. And, and if you ever, you're reading and you find that I have no idea what he's talking about right now, go ahead and just reread that. Let that kind of sink in and, and make sure you understand each word of the text. Don't just you know sum up the Bible, don't just skim through it, but actually read it word for word and make sure you actually understand what's going on. Verse 12, Paul starts, I give thanks to Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, appointing me to the ministry. So I'm just gonna kind of jot down, uh, first thing, I'm just gonna go down a couple lines too so I have some line, or some room to write up there. Uh, but in verse 12, because what I'm, what I'm immediately seeing is where Paul says, he appointed me to the ministry. That, that, that was actually a calling and appointing of something that God did is that he appointed him to the ministry. And Paul goes on that, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an arrogant man, but I received mercy because I acted out of ignorance and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them. And once again, I'm just gonna jot down 1 Timothy 15, and later on I'm gonna go and kind of write my thoughts about these and why they stood out to me and why I cared enough to write them down. But that's just gonna give me a reference. I don't stop, I'm not gonna stop the flow of my reading. I just wanna stop, jot down, and keep going. So I'll read that verse again. This saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and I am the worst of them. But I received mercy for this reason, so that in me, the worst of them, Christ Jesus might demonstrate his extraordinary patience as an example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Timothy, my son, I am giving you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies previously made about you so that by recalling them, you may fight the good fight, having faith and a good conscience. Some have rejected these and have shipwrecked their faith. Among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander, and I'll do that one, who I have delivered to Satan so that they may be taught not to blaspheme. And that's a very interesting verse. I think most of us will say that's uh, a fascinating thing that Paul just said here, that he delivered them to Satan. And that's one of the things that as I would move forward in my Bible study, I would you know, get out my phone, I would look up um, maybe the meaning, or, or what I'll start with here is I'll start with an app called eSword. Um, and I have the King James Version with Strong's Concordance here. Uh, so I'm just going to go down to verse 20 and just kind of see what some of the original words meant here. Um, so I'm actually just going to kick on, click on the Strong's Concordance. Um, so it just says, Hymenaeus, the, that, that name was an opponent of Christianity, is what kind of Strong says about that. Um, let's go with the word delivered, see if there's more meaning to that. So the Greek word, I'm not going to pronounce for you guys, sorry. 
but it says to surrender, that is yield up and trust transmit. To betray, bring forth, cast, commit, deliver, give, a hazard, put in prison, or recommend. So it, pretty much exactly as it said there. So most of this is kind of lining up with what our original thought was. We would just do this to make sure there's not a deeper meaning that we're not familiar with. And blaspheme, of course, means to spe specifically to speak impiously, to blaspheme, defame, rail on, revile, or speak evil. So most of it, it has about the similar meaning that we're thinking. So what I would do is I'd probably just turn to a Google search at this point. Uh, let me get rid of this. And I, don't, I don't know that you can actually see my phone. I'll tell you more of what, what I'm seeing. So I'm going to go to Bible Hub. They have a commentary that comes up right, right now. So the verse, of course, is of whom Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have delivered to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Okay, so right down here we have Matthew Henry's commentary. Uh, where he speaks on this and he says the ministry is a warfare against sin and satan carried on under the lord jesus who is the captain of our salvation the good hopes others have had of us should stir us up to duty and let us be upright in our conduct in all things the design of the highest cens censures in the primitive church was to prevent further sin and to reclaim the sinner may all who are tempted to put away a good conscience and to abuse the gospel, remember that this is the way to what makes shipwreck of faith awesome. So we can kind of read that and see that what most likely happened in that situation is that Paul, dealing with Hymenaeus and Alexander himself, he delivered them unto Satan by kicking them out of Christianity. That there was kind of a punishment to ensue for their, their blasphemy. Um, so it just kind of gives us a bit more, and when I'm confused about a verse like that, I'll look it up and I'll try to get most accurate meaning I like. Sometimes I don't like the meaning, but that doesn't change the Word of God. So at this point, what I would do, and uh, for the sake of keeping this video uh, somewhat short and watchable, what I would do is I would write out each of these verses that I kind of wrote down here. Um, that as I wrote down these verses, I would actually just write them out so that I would have them and maybe I could try to memorize them if it, it seemed like a good memory verse. Um, and then I would kind of have a section down here that I would write what I got out of this passage, what I learned from it, what I took from it, um, just how it spoke to me. And that's typically what my Bible study journaling will look like. Um, and then any kind of studies or any kind of commentaries that I read spoke out. If I, I read something there that spoke to me, like I just read that in Matthew Henry's commentary, I would actually write that out in my journal too. And I would just have it all here in this one journal entry. And now I'm actually probably gonna finish this journal entry uh, probably later tonight because my daughter has woke up so uh, daddy duties are ensuing um, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this video that you got something out of it if you're looking to start studying the Bible uh, why don't you start in 1st Timothy go ahead and finish the book of 1st Timothy which is it's super short it's, not, it's only two pages in my book but it's only six chapters long okay so a super short book start your study in 1st Timothy and tell me what you guys get from it all right guys have a blessed day and keep living the bold life. All right, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I release content just like this every single week. Go ahead and leave me a comment below telling me about what your daily Bible study looks like and if you enjoyed this video.